thing. Absolutely. Gautam Trivedi is with us, co-founder and managing partner at Napian Capital. Uh, and uh, Gautam, great to have you with us here on the program. Thanks very much. Uh, you know, quite Morning. an index, but it's such a rich market for activity if you look at stocks, right? And it can keep you so busy uh, with uh, earnings coming through and these large moves. Uh, and, and we've seen that all the last uh, four or five trading sessions now. Uh, your views uh, and what are you seeing out there, uh, Gautam? No, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, it's very, very stock specific, sector specific as well. You've seen the private sector banks in particular that have had fantastic numbers. At the same time, you've seen IT companies that have, of course, disappointed. And we don't see any significant uh, signs of improvement in the IT space, at least for the next couple of quarters, at least based on what we've been guided. So I think uh, it is uh, very interesting uh, to see, uh, uh, you know, different different sectors performing uh, widely differently. Now, uh, if you look at the last 12 months, and I think in some sense we've been in the twilight zone where the environment uh, you know, is, is very, very dull to the extent that investors are now you know, losing patience and wondering what to do next because a lot of them actually are telling me that, uh, and again, these are colleagues and uh, former colleagues and friends, that if a recession in the US were to happen, uh, let's let's hope it starts next week and gets done with versus uh, you know having a slow death in terms of uh, waiting for a more opportune moment to get into the market so i think that's where where uh, the mood is if you look at the equity markets in general they've been so dull that the best performing asset class this year actually is bitcoin which is up 70% and then the second highest is gold which is only 9 up 9% so this tells you where where things are msci emerging markets by the way are up only 4% so again very very dull period and uh, i think best to focus on individual stocks uh, that you think have uh, value going forward mm. hi gautam morning uh, you know so it looks like a perfect time then for a stock picker like you all Oh, what have you all picked up then? You know, since the markets is pretty much flattish, you know, sideways yeah. moves is what we have seen. The Bitcoin surprised everyone when everyone was, uh, you know, throwing in the towel out there. But That's individual right. stocks, where have you all added some positions? Any new stocks you have picked up? You know, we have been, I don't want to talk specifically on individual stocks, uh, but the fact is, if you look at the BSE 500, the broader index, and you know the the Nifty 50 I've always told people is quite deceiving. You have to look at the broader market. And if you look at the BSE 500, you know uh, there are about half the stocks which are down more than 20%. 135 stocks are down 30% or more. So, and if you look at names, uh, I don't want to name individual stocks, but if you look at the EMS space, for example, those stocks are down as much as 40% from their peaks. Uh, a lot of the exporters are down 45 to 50%. Uh, merchandise exporters. And again, I, I'm not necessarily saying the merchandise exporters um, are looking attractive, but I'm just saying there's value starting to emerge. A lot of names, a lot of sectors. And I guess I advise people to run screens, which will then, I guess, give them a sense of where value is emerging. But I think there is there is value starting to emerge. There's a lot of positive uh, news that we believe will, will happen over the next, uh, more in the second half of this fiscal, fiscal year. So I think uh, India, I don't want to use the word decouple, but India will, I think, perform better uh, versus uh, the rest of the emerging market and Asia Pacific pack uh, versus what it's done in the last 12 months. Uh, so what are the positive triggers that you anticipate, particularly in the second half of the year? And if you could give some more color on where value is emerging right now. Sure. I think on the positive uh, triggers, what I would say is that, you know, India today has the fourth highest earnings growth uh, in 2024. I'm talking ahead. Uh, where consensus is now at about 13%. Uh, Korea's 44%. Taiwan's 19%. China's 14 So we're the fourth highest and almost neck to neck with China in terms of earnings growth. Two, if you look at valuations, we've had about a 15%, 15 to 16% correction in a nifty 50 valuation. Again, like I said, that is deceiving. That's really not uh, what investors should be focusing on because there's a whole swath of stocks below the nifty 50 uh, that, are, uh, that, that, I, that, have, that are much cheaper and not as expensive as the nifty 50 itself. The other thing I would add is uh, the big CapEx program that we've heard in the budget, 13 lakh crores, uh, which is a gigantic number. And I guess the government of India has realized that private sector CapEx may not necessarily again pick up this fiscal year. So the burden of spending still rests uh, squarely on the shoulders of the government of India. Not to mention you've got a major election next year. Another 
five elections to state elections to go. So I think a lot of that CapEx activity, both from the government and some of these state governments, will significantly pick up in the uh, second half of uh, this fiscal year. So I, I see these two things. I think the third thing which a lot of people don't seem to realize is that I think uh, there is, to some extent, uh, I think ONDC, again, it's early days, and I've been following this very much, uh, very, very, we've been following it very closely. It's now expanded to 180 cities, uh, 26,000 merchants, and 2.4 million products being offered. I think in some, some, some ways, this is where UPI was in its early days, and look at the way it's exploded. So I think uh, this government seems to be pretty focused on expanding the ONDC network. That, I think, could be the third trigger into uh, going into the uh, second half of this fiscal year. Mm. Gautam, uh, we're also entering election season, right? Especially uh, yep. state elections right now. Karnataka, of course, goes to polls on the 10th of May, results out 13th of May. Uh, lots of activity there. Any thoughts at all? Uh, is it uh, relevant for markets at all, in your opinion? I think to some extent, uh, it may be a one-day move on the markets, but I think uh, once the results are out, and Nobody knows which what which way they're going to go. But if uh, if let's assume for a minute if the BJP were not to gain power in Karnataka, and historically history has told us that's been difficult to do so uh, in that state, uh, I think uh, uh, the market will shrug it off. Uh, you know, frankly, and pretty much focus on the economic health of the country, and that's really what's paramount at this point. Okay, all right, uh, Gautam. What about rural India? Still, it seems to be in a bit of pain. I think we had spoken about it the last time as well. But That's now you right. have these state elections that are coming up. Maybe rural India sees some bit of recovery. Maybe it's bottomed out. Do you believe it's bottomed out? And if yes, will you look to play a couple of themes out there? Uh, it's a very good question. It's a very topical question. And clearly, we're seeing a sign, a tale of two very different Indias. You have urban India where you've got, you know, Nestle versus HUL. I think that's a great comparison. You know, blowout numbers from Nestle, 27% top line growth in HUL, you know, 4% uh, volume growth. So, you know, very, very mild numbers from HUL because that's more of a pan India play versus Nestle, which is more of an urban play. In fact, I just got off the earnings call of Indian hotels. And if you look at their numbers, again, very significant uh, earning uh, urban India play. And, uh, you know, numbers were absolutely stunning. Record profits. In fact, their profits of uh, uh, FY23 were higher than the combined profits of the three best financial years. So that tells you where uh, urban India is versus uh, uh, rural India. But I still, I'm not, I, I still don't see signs and confidence of uh, rural India picking up. Uh, you've got the monsoon starting in the next two months, and I guess we'll have a pretty good sense of where that's headed. So as much as there's been a lot of effort by this government in irrigation, we cannot forget the fact that India is still very much dependent on the monsoon. So if the monsoons are not good or unseasonal, or there's a bigger heat wave than anticipated, these are you know multitude of natural factors which uh, can end up impacting uh, agricultural growth, agricultural income, and as a result, uh, spending in uh, rural India. So I think I, I still am not confident that uh, we're seeing signs of that picking up as yet. Mm. Uh, you know, buying into some of these themes uh, uh, has been uh, pr profitable. I mean, railways, for example, is one of those, right? You were talking about government capex, etc. Do you own any yeah. of these names? And uh, wh where are these stocks set in terms of uh, mapping out where stocks, what stocks have done uh, relative to the potential out there? Uh, one way to do it is to look at valuations. Yeah, I think uh, we've actually not invested in any of the railway uh, companies, so uh, I'm not really an expert on that on that subject. Having said that. I think the best way to play uh, the upcoming government capex is, uh, I think, metals is to look at cement stocks. I know there's been uh, uh, some degree of activity on the m and side in cement, uh, but I think these are the two best ways to play the upcoming uh, government and state government capex. Any particular stocks you would play from the cement space, uh, Gautam? You know, because I'm looking at it and pricing is not really coming up, but yeah. the raw material cost is going down. What could happen is the large become larger, the small could be forced to sell. Uh, how would you approach the space? Stick to the large names or play the smaller ones which have valuation comfort and maybe in fact there could be a potential takeover or a turnaround. 
Yeah, I think uh, that's a fair point. Uh, you're right, absolutely, that the larger cap companies, whether it's an Ultratech or the uh, uh, ACC Ambuja, or even for that matter, Shri Cement, they're more expensive than the smaller ones. And, and uh, you know, I, I still think there is merit in buying some of the mid-cap names, e even if they are not necessarily takeover targets, just valuation comfort. Again, keeping in mind the fact that there still might be that U.S. recession that, you know, it consensus estimates are still at 65% probability of that recession happening. So if that were to happen, and then we see that uh, uh, impact, the somewhat impact of that on the Indian equity markets, I think uh, you'd be better protected owning uh, some of the regional names uh, versus the large caps. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Gautam, for uh, joining you. in this morning. Great conversation, as always. We've got a corporate conversation.